So who are you endorsing for the 45th council? Well, this is the problem. This is what the people have to understand. It's really pathetic when the ask on them, and everybody knows who I mean, they, it's like ask not what the ask on them could do for us. Ask what we can do to make the ask on them more powerful by them snapping their fingers and like sheep, but we're running to the election. Let me tell you something. If any of these people running would come over and say, right before Pesach, on the air of Pesach, they would come from the sanitation department and say, they're charging you an extra $50 because you have a Jewish garbage pickup, etc. It's, it's costing money. So you would pay the $50 because they didn't want the hummus in your garbage cans. But then you would say, I'm never voting for this person. So for $50, you wouldn't vote for them for $50, right? But you'll go vote for somebody who could be pro-abortion, pro-transgender, pro-same-gender bathrooms, and all, all this sorts. Why? Because radio program, because they tell you, they became the Das Torah, you understand? They became the Das Torah. And do you think that every rabbi is a Das Torah in this? When some of those rabbis who are now in the pictures posing with this woman who's running, did any of these rabbis, self-respecting rabbis, forget about asking her, can you tell me what's your position on abortion on demand? They're making terrible laws now in New Jersey. They can kill a baby even if it was born from a botched abortion. Did they even ask? Did they say, you know, we're afraid that they're going to make more transgendered bathrooms, etc., etc., and what service for us? Did they ask? No. Did they even ask, what is this article in the Daily News that in 2012 you made a comment about the Jews? Did they even ask her that? Did they ask anything? So I'm telling you, Rabbi Sai, sit on your hands. Shev al tasa adif. There's no reason. A person from the black community, is, chances are, is going to win. It could even be the person they endorsed. It's not the point. We don't have to make ourselves sheeple to just vote for the winner, no matter. Hey, but what's going to be? What's going to be if we're not connected? She can see without us. Yesh Elohim. Stop singing all those songs a cappella in the middle of Sphira like Yehuda Levin did it. Stop. Don't sing all the songs about Amun and Betachen and then say, oh, you have to go out and vote. Mm -hmm. She ignored you. When you asked her the question, she ignored you. She, the problem is, the reason I call her deluded is because she really thinks she's a very bright young lady. She's almost a third of a century old. She's not that young anymore. The prince in the land, Flatbush girl, just doesn't do it anymore. That's why I call her Flatbush mama for two reasons. No more to remind us she's the mother of children, and someday her children will look back at the disgusting things that she does on the on the uh, on the videos and then the Instagrams and the Telegrams and everything else, and she's going to be embarrassed. And I'm reminded that she has to be mature because she's the mother of children, and she has to send them to Yeshiva. And I call her Flatbush Mama also because she wants to be the mama of us all. Look at her preoccupation in the interview with you. Celebrity, I'm not quite a celebrity. I'm a leader, I'm a wannabe, I'm with the other leaders, all this stuff. But the fact of the matter is she sends out to her accolades. Who are her accolades? Some of them are teeny whoopers, pre-teens, teens, and post-teens who, who, you know, they cover their hair until over here, and they run to eat sushi, you know what I mean? And they go on Caribbean vacations. And these people think all of the chachmas that she's doing, because they don't have ashka, but they think it's right. So she's making them kalia. She sends out to them on the air of Shabbos. We, we have to start dialoguing, all of us, with the LGBTQRST and the OTD, the off the derech crowd. Now, it's unbelievable. A woman who doesn't cover her hair, Maybe that's the reason a lot of her brains are falling out. She was so offended when I said she's a whiffle head. But what is it? I mean, she's an airhead. She's not using her cycle. She tells us that our children and, and have to go in dialogue with orthodox people. Doesn't she say in Davin or her husband, the great Chaim Berlin graduate who's pushing Chaim Berlin, all of a sudden Mendel Schechter, Mendel Schechter, you were busy endorsing the late unlamented Lou Fiddler. I mean, I'm sorry he passed away. But when he was standing for all the schmutz, you're busy supporting him. How come you're not coming out now and, and, and criticizing and scoring Shashitsky, AKA Sash, for using the name Chaim Berlin in his advertisements? Yeah, anyhow, in other words, the silence, the silence of the rabbinate is, is staggering. But anyhow, the fact of the matter is, she's telling our, our kids that they should die like what the Mishkid is offering. This is truly, truly terrible. It's terrible. Why do you think Adina Sash is really running? Do you think she has an agenda here to help Yafed? She told me in an interview that she cut off relationships with them. Do you think it's real? Do you think it's fake? What do you think the agenda is? See, the problem is, because she's basically at core valueless, she has a chip on her shoulder, 
against the rigidity of Yiddishkeit, that's for sure, okay? I, I, I don't know what she did in her life and when she did it and how she did it and what bothered her because she has two grandfathers, Tadikim. I knew them both briefly. I knew of them, I should say. I didn't know Rabbi Adler, but I knew Rabbi Miles, who was coming occasionally to my shul. And Yabod Lechaim, her father, Eli Miles, said, Tzadik Yisoyed Olam, a Ziskite, a Kaddish V'tohar, a Gutskite. So where does it come such a thing? She has some kind of a big psychological problem. So her core values are, are, are very liberal, ultra-liberal. You know, she, she did videos about why can't women blow shofar. She's got big chips and shoulders. By the way, let's mention, she also did a video at Kosher Fest, very important to mention. She took something, a stick with a hand on it, a wooden stick, um, and, and she bent over and uh, her protruding posterior, excuse me, <coughs> like that, her rump, like a horse, and she had a 65-year-old man with a white beard patching her. And she put this out. Then she went into Eichler's and she asked for an adult toy. And in case he didn't understand clearly what she meant on Hanukkah, asking for an adult toy, she said for her and her husband. Now the Shakranas tries to say that she did it. She wanted a game board for her and her husband. You understand? She thinks we're fools. So she's so self-delusional. I don't even know if she knows Yesterday, she was against yeshivas. She told the homosexual activist, I'm against yeshivas controlling us, okay? Now, she's all of a sudden the great defender of yeshivas, but she still hasn't switched her children. So what nefarious thing tomorrow she could wake up on the other side of the bed? She's, she's, she doesn't have core values, you understand? So anything is possible with her. Anything is possible with her. Now, what would it take for, for you or anyone to really see maybe she did change her ways? How do you, like, you know... Oh, it's what, very, very simple. What's the limit test, a, you know? Reb Shimon, that's the next... Because you don't want to throw it to the side. That's not here if it's not right. That's you know? upset, Reb Shimon. The question is going to be like this. In year to Hashem, if she is defeated this time around, and even if she isn't, six months from now, when there's a full election, and everybody's coming out, it's not a special, and there won't be nine candidates mm -hmm. running... There's almost no way politically she could hold on to the seat, even if she'll get it. And I think she's finished. I, I call attention to my Jewish Press article, which is going to be seen by thousands of people. It's in this week's Jewish Press today on the Culture Dispatch. It's an interview where I make many of the same points I'm making here. So I don't think, I don't think that's going to happen. But here's the deal. If she will keep just dressing, covering her hair, loose-fitting clothing that are not shayadik, and stop doing some of her more zany antics and using her poor foppish husband as a yuck yuck straight man. It's an embarrassment. It's cringing. It's emasculating. It's it's terrible. Please, Sash, a little, a little, please. But if she stops doing all these things, if she stops talking the ultra left wing claptrap, then we'll see. And then I hold that the community should start to support her as she climbs back first to normalcy. A few years of normal. And then if she wants to use her talents, she could talk to the Makara people. She could talk to use her skills in a very positive way. She's a very bright woman. Nobody's denying that. Nobody's denying that. It's just a shame. You see, look, I just did a parody now. I'm twice her age. Did I do I did this spontaneous. We put this together in 20 minutes. I didn't spend hours, like her father says, planning out the things. So even in the big thing, Miss Miles, the big thing you pride yourself on, that you can do parody and comedy, I match you on that also, and it's nothing. Hashem gave me the talent. As Rosh Limbaugh says, talent alone from God. So come and ish the a and beckle because I was able to make thousands of people laugh at you. It's nothing. They were, Grow up. So what is it that her parody is bringing over 30,000 people to watch? First of Your parody is going to bring 10 people. So the first, first of all, the, the, the thing is like this. I want you to understand something. The thing is like this. First of all, the 40,000 is a big exaggeration. I'll explain to you why. Because over time... This one might have checked it once, that one might have checked it once, but you see from the comments, there's the same few jokers, 20, 30, 40 people, the same ones commenting, etc., etc. And you see different videos that she made, and they got 1.33 kids, 1.3k hits. She did a thing with a, with a seven year old girl, somebody sent me. They went to some kind of a uh, a collar, a collar uh, store. She got what? And, and that collar store paid her for this, good money. They got 1,000, 1 1.3 thousand hits. I've had videos where I get 50,000 hits. I've had videos where I get 200 hits. So you're more popular than, a, than no, a Flappish Girl? No, no, no. It has nothing to do with popularity. And I, you should understand something. That my popularity, quote unquote, it's not popularity, it's far from popular. My getting attention is despite the fact that all my viewpoints are basically very unpopular, certainly with the secular society and the liberals, and even with a lot of Haredis who feel that I'm a 16th century witch burner. 
So when I do something, you understand, I get the, I get the coverage of the publicity despite everything that's against me. But I don't want to talk about Yehuda Levin. Listen, when I was her age, I had already run for Congress and run for mayor. And I was covering the New York Times and got the headlines in the mayoral debate. I'm not in competition with her. I did, I've been there, I've done that a half a lifetime ago. I did it better and I did it for Kedushin. I did it with, with the courage of the Gedal Yisrael, etc. It's not a question of that. I'm really offended by what she's doing. I hope she does tshuva and we should be responsible for her to do tshuva. How long have you been watching her Instagram account? I never watched her Instagram account. How do you know everything is, that she's I'm doing? I'm explaining to you. I'm explaining to you. If you go on my WhatsApp site today, even you'll see that flying in, I put out a call. Please send information because it's going to be a meeting with Shmuel Kamenetsky ostensibly if it takes place. And I said, please send me the information because I don't stockpile this stuff, you know. So people sent me the stuff, and people sent me the stuff, pictures of her, and tweets about her, and comments. Where are they from? Like what? The people sending this stuff. All kinds, all kinds of people send. I, I, I don't even know here for that. It could be late, but it could be from, it's from people. People who are obviously aggravated. And they know that Yehuda Lev was the first one back in the summer to call attention to the fact that it's a chutzpah. I said, where are the rabbis? Where are the rabbitsons? And nobody opened their mouth. Now, do you think Rabbi Shmuel Kamenetsky really gave permission for I think, some liquid guy to get, put a curse yeah, on her? Yeah, I mean, what is this? You, what, no, what I'll is tell this? you. I'll tell you. If somebody calls up Rashmul Kamenetsky and he's a Ben Torah and he speaks with Derek Herz and Edelheim, he says, listen, this is what the lady does. And he goes through the Asara Makos or the Dayenos and he tells her all these things. And he says, I, I want to curse her. So I, I think Rashmul, I just said, you're allowed to curse such a person. Now I want to explain, this is very important. Would you, when you speak to Rabbi Shmuel Kamenetsky, when is this today? You're going to speak I, to? I'm not part of this thing. However, I have offered, I'm not part of this, but I offered that if this meeting takes place, that I would, I would be very happy to be on the speaker phone with Rabbi Kamenetsky and them. So if this young man, and he's very young, does not do an adequate job in presenting, and she does a snow job on Rev Kamenetsky, I would like to be on the phone if they want, so that he should hear what the true story is. Yeah, but how would you? What's your approach? Okay. So let me refine your question. Let me refine your question. Yehuda Levin, would you curse her, Aleph? Would you? Do you hate her? Base. What should our approach be from a Ruchni's perspective of somebody who we believe is corrupting? I call the flat push corrupt their mama. And the answer is as follows. Uh, when this well-meaning gentleman put out this thing they spoke to Rabbi Kamenetsky about cursing, you can check my WhatsApp, it's a matter of public record. I said, no cursing, chas We don't curse. We don't curse. Now, let's talk about hate. Okay? Can we hate her? So I want to tell you something. The Chavitz Chaim says, on the, in the first in the first simon in Arachayim, you look in the Mishnah Bura, you look on the second page at the bottom, the Bir Halacha. The Ramos says, do not pay attention to people who are maligim, they scorn your Yiddishkeit. So the Chavetz Chaim brings down the Bir Halacha. That that which the Ramos and the Beis Yosef say you shouldn't get involved, that's down on a personal thing. However, if somebody is making a gezeira, a law, or impacting society that it's going to impact and do anti-Torah things, and you warn them that it's inappropriate, here is the Chavetz Chaim speaking. He says, Mitzvah l'sanoisam l'hizkoitet imohem. It is a mitzvah, says the Chavetz Chaim. The great loving Chavetz Chaim, Abbas Chesed, to hate the person and to fight with them until the end. Then he quotes King David, David HaMelech. Tachlis sino sinesi, the quintessence of, of, of loathing, of abomination. I hate the person. So the first you saw it is the Chavetz Chaim says that you're supposed to hate people who consciously, knowingly have been warned and they continue to perpetrate that the tzibur should sin and things that are antithetical to Torah. Now, let's not, I'm not finished yet. When I got the letter, I was the catalyst for the letter from Moshe Feinstein that you have to fight on the Gudistra Bottom Stationery in approximately 1986, within the year before he was lifted up. It was, okay, he, he wrote, he wrote, golui We have to fight, we have to go down to City Hall, he wrote, to fill the auditorium. Laharais Goli, to show manifestly, Lacholo Anim, to all the non Jews, She'am Hashem, the Jewish people, so Toeva, we loathe abomination. Okay, but my Jews even hate. Now, now I say, I'm not under my Drega. So I don't even hate the people who are sinners, but I'll tell you what I do do, and this is what I suggest. The Chazal were Mesakin, a 19th bracha in Shemayin Esrei, the Lamalshinim, the Moisrim, 
B'chol aminim, these are the api kursim. B'chol evecha, the people who have in their mind to do bad things to do. They didn't bring it out with Maisa. B'cha zeidim, zeidim is a lotion of Jewish Hellenists who actually do bad to the Jewish people. And we say in davening every day, sa'ake, ushishsabe, ushishsabe, they should be mamish knocked out. So I say like this. I don't want to be Machavin that Avi Weiss, when he does his Kalashem, or Nisan Cordoza Lova, or the guys from Chayvei Torah, or Flatbush Mama, or Leia the Lesbian. I don't want to say that they should be in this category, but I'll tell you what I do do, and I advise this publicly. I think it's an obligation to make a tonight and say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If these people who seem manifestly to be destroying the very fiber of Klal Yisrael and what they're doing, if they fall under one of these categories, Lama Shinim, Oivim, Zaydim, then you decide HaKadosh Baruch Hu and you do what's appropriate. You see, I don't say I hate them, it's not, I hope they return. But if, if Hashem, if this is why Chazal was Misak Lama Shinim, then I have no problem saying that tonight with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, take care of them. And that's my attitude. Now, here's the deal. Five months ago, I offered, I offered to her family, to her father, I will sit down with her privately, no cameras, no nothing. It's after the district leadership. And let's talk to her. If I can't, let's talk, let's dialogue if she'll change, okay? And I, he, was, he said, I don't think it's going to happen, etc., etc. Now maybe she's desperate, so she would like to, because she's like, what they call, excuse my language, but she says it even on herself. People say this, and it's taka true, a publicity whore. So now she might be desperate enough, like she's running to Rav Kamenetsky. What's her husband running to Kamenetsky? She's on the ballot anyhow, okay? And she can only look good, like, see, Rabbi Kamenetsky is much me to talk to me. And she'll talk certain... She never, she never said Rav Shmuel uh, endorsed her or anything. No, what do you mean? no, you didn't hear what I said. What do you mean she, she was going to say, you see, Rabbi Shmuel Kamenetsky sat in dialogue with me, just like the homosexual Levant. She never said that. I don't know why you're saying that. She didn't say it yet. She didn't say it. She didn't imply it. She never interjected. I asked her a question on video. One second. She said she is going to meet with Rabbi Kamenetsky. Do you know that even? Okay, so you don't know that. She has agreed with Alta Eliezer Richter, and tonight there's an appointment to Shmuel Kamenetsky. They're both going independently. Why is she going? You don't know this. Why is she going? She is going because she gains credibility. You see, I, I'm going, I'm approaching Das Torah. She has nothing to lose. The name can't be off the ballot. And she's trying this. But maybe, she, but maybe she's spend. really changed. Maybe she's, but, maybe she wants to uh, change. If she really changed, instead of lying to you and avoiding about the adult games, about the transvestites, avoiding anything uh, about the gays and lesbians, I'm let her come out and say clearly, I renounce and I apologize for what I did with Abby Stein. You're making it sound no, like I'm endorsing her or no, something like that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just interviewing her as a candidate. I, know, I am in no way, shape, but or you're form. You're asking me. Maybe she did too. I'm bringing you right. She didn't. She had your opportunity speaking to you to come on and be contrite and not to try to be wiser than you and speak circles and everything else. Exactly. That I agree with. I, I asked her so straight I'm out. Saying, I, I asked her the saying, right questions. Why, of course, I'm not criticizing you. I'm saying she had an opportunity whether you asked the right questions or even if you wouldn't ask questions, which she avoided. She could say, I'm here today to say... You know, my my viewers are not stupid. I know that she didn't answer but, certain of my I'll questions. You, this is the reason she's going to have a comment. She, she has nothing to lose. If she persuades him halfway... To say something nice about it because she'll talk all through him and he never met her before and he might be taken in a little, she wins. If not, she says, Look, I spoke to Das Torah. You understand? She's very, very clever. But I'm saying as follows She has an opportunity. We will see if she did tshuva. After in Yir Sashim, she loses this, or even if she wins, Kal If she keeps undressing, she keeps her covering her hair, she starts to send the kiss to Yeshiva, she puts out to all her accolades, what? she's looking to climb off the tree now with this whole thing. As the kids get older, it's going to become increasingly difficult to keep them in charter schools because the differential between the kids, when they go to school and everything, is going to be horrific. She has to send the Yeshiva. This is an outrage. She's such a never. I'm sure all her business that she's doing and her videos that she's doing with the businesses is this PR guru she puts on. She's not getting paid never. It's so sad. Let her move in with her father or let her move in with the Shishitskis and take the money. I raised nine kids. I paid all my tuitions. I don't know anything, okay? And everybody knows I don't have a penny to my name, okay? If you want to do it, the Rebbe Shalom will make sure you do it. Everybody else, I'm sure you have a difficulty paying tuition. What kind of an excuse right. is this? What kind of an excuse is this? 
it, it's Lisam al Damri Yahu, we don't complain that she is mistreating. This is called spiritual abuse of a kid. She's worried about child abuse. What about the spiritual abuse? She's a spiritual abuser with a high bullying grand husband that posing with the tits. Now, come on, give it a break. She's Adina, she's not genteel, and she's miles away from you from Erlich Yiddishkeit. Shame on her. Come back. She comes back. We will embrace her, we'll endorse her and everything else in her, in her efforts, but it's way too, she has a long way to go.